basically I'm from Malaysia. I'm a 21 years old photographer and digital artist. And today I'm here to share about my journey as a photographer and digital artist. All right, so I was the youth photographer of the year two years ago. And I'm very, very happy and grateful to be here in Madrid because it is my first time here and it is my second time sitting in an aeroplane flying all the way from Malaysia. So it's a very surreal experience and Madrid is a very beautiful city and I would love to capture it beautifully. All right, so before I begin my sh story, I would love to know, is there anyone here who are interested in visual arts like drawing, photography, and stuff like that. Raise your hands up. Whoa. Okay, that's quite a number. All right, cool. And now I have one more question for everyone. Are you guys doing what you love now? Who is doing what he or she is love now? Raise their hands up. All right, awesome, awesome. This is awesome. A round of applause for everyone. You know, when I ask this question, Back in my own country, the response is not very positive. And so I was very surprised and yep. Okay, so I will start sharing my story. So my passion for arts begins very, very early when I was five and six years old. And when I was small, I used to draw and vandalize the wall in my house. And my mother will usually get very angry and mad because I shouldn't be doing that on the wall. I should be drawing on the paper. So basically, um, she sent me to the drawing center and I begin my journey to learn drawing properly. All right. Okay, so this is basically my home. It is a very small flat, like 500 square feet, probably smaller than the stage which I'm standing on right now. And yeah, I won a lot of small competitions, art drawing competitions back then when I was small, and I don't even have a shelf to display my trophies. I have to keep all my trophies in a cupboard. <laughs> and, yep. So, growing up in a not very wealthy family with a passion for art is very tough and very difficult for me. And one of my high school teachers even said this to me, drawing is useless. Don't waste your time. Go and study. Go get a job like everyone else. You know, because art has no future, art has no money, you know, earning money is the most important thing. And it is very crushing and very sad because you get demotivated and you love the passion and love the art so much. And I basically created this artwork, it is basically waterfall of tears. <laughs> yep. But not every teacher is a bad teacher. I also met some good teacher like this one, basically Madam Sui Yok, and she basically gave me a lot of word of encouragement, like the quotes on the cards, what, whoever I am, whatever I'm doing, some kind of excellence is within my reach. So this ignites the hope in myself. So my family is not really supportive of me doing something art-related as well because we are not really financially capable of, you know, art is always expensive. You have, to, you have to get the equipments and stuff like that. Everything is money. So we are facing some financial difficulties and my family is basically from low to middle income family, yeah. And even my first DSLR camera, we have to purchase it with a three years loan. It is just a camera and I have to like, my mother have to like pay for it every month for three years. And the reason she agrees to buy that to me is because she believes I could do something great with the camera. So why photography? Photography for me is like, it's like painting, but with a single click, kachak, and you get an artwork. So I got this idea and I decided to try out photography. I start to go to YouTube and magazines, a lot of photography magazines, and started self-learning. Everything is free on YouTube, so there's no reason you cannot like, learn something new. Or yeah. So photography to me is like painting in a single click. This is actually one of my photos which wins a small competition 
back in my country when I just starting out as a photographer. Okay, so in order to pursue what I really passionate about, which is art, I have to actually get a scholarship because I'm not from a wealthy family and my family doesn't have the fund and financial capability for me. So in order for me to secure the scholarship, I have to get good result. But the weird thing in my country is that in order to get a good result, I have to study something which I'm not passionate about, which is science, like physics, biology, and chemistry, stuff like that. So the last two years of high school is very tough for me. I have to like focus fully on these subjects which I'm not passionate about because I need the result in order to get a scholarship. So I get the four years freedom in university to do what I love. And in the end, I made it. I scored straight A's for the exam. And basically, once I got the result, I just spray painted everything. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's not an easy path, but I made it. Okay, this is actually my grandparents' home in Alor Star. So these are my grandfather and grandmother. This place means a lot to me because I usually go back and take photos of the place. Alor Star is a small town with a lot of paddy field and rice fields. It is a very beautiful place. I believe Spain has a lot of places like this too. Lots of white fields, beautiful flowers. Yep. So I used to shoot even in the rain. And this is one of the photos where you can see there's a storm coming and there's basically a rider going away <laughs> from the storm. So I love to shoot whether it is sunny or rainy, it doesn't matter. I just go out and shoot. Okay, so I got into university and I met this lecturer. He is also one of the most important person in my life because I asked him a question, how do I become a better photographer? And the advice he gave me is actually pretty simple. Just three words. Just keep shooting. All right, so I did. I just continue shoot and shoot more whenever I have free time. And this is actually another works. And I have to like capture the timing correctly. And yep. This one is special because we are actually celebrating Chinese New Year. And in my country, Malaysia, um, people of different races actually come together and celebrate it. Like in this photo, um, there are three races, which is Chinese, Malay, Indians. We are all on our bikes and we go to the basketball court and basically play fireworks and celebrate. Yep. All right, so other than doing photography, I never forget about my painting and drawings. So with the appearance of digital technology, I feel that I need to catch up so I started to learn how to create artworks by using computer digitally. I bought myself a very cheap, small tablet, and I connect it to the computer, and I started drawing. I draw on the tablet, and the info will go into the screen. So it's like creating an artwork in computer. So with the idea I have in my mind, I usually start with a sketch, and then I further executed it and started painting in the colors and everything and to bring it to life. So I created a lot of digital artworks. This is one of it, Orchestra of the Universe, Desert Dream. And yeah, eventually I won the biggest competition back in my country and I get to do my first ever solo exhibition. And yeah, it feels very surreal because I've been working for a very, very long time, and I finally got the chance to do it, uh, my own personal solo exhibition. All right, so other than this, I have also come up with the idea that how, what if I combine the two worlds between photography and digital art? So I decided to give it a try, basically taking photography into the digital world and mix them together. Basically, it is called digital imaging or photo manipulation. Okay, so again, I started with a sketch. And for this, I basically have this idea in my mind, which is a white lady is standing in the middle of the photo, and he, she is holding a burning newspaper, and I would love to deliver the meaning of like, um, the lies which media portrays. 
All right, so I started shooting the flames, the fires, and eventually I set up the background with newspaper and everything, and then I combine everything in computer, and this is the final output. So it is the same for this artwork as well. As well. This is the actually the behind the scene. It is actually in a real location, and it's very dark, and there's a lot of mosquitoes, and it's not easy. So yeah. Basically, um, once I got the photo, I process everything in computer digitally to create the stars effects and everything. All right, so this is actually my hands, but my finger is still here, no worries. And this artwork basically got into a newspaper. This is actually my first feature in the local newspaper. Okay, and slowly and slowly, by more hard work and patience, my works got exposed to more local medias in newspaper, magazines, you know, eventually in the National Gallery, and I get to do group exhibition, slowly climbing up the ladders, and until this moment, it is super surreal, because basically one day I received a phone call, it is from UK, and I answered it. Basically, the woman in the call is saying that she's flying me all the way to London, because I won the awards. And at first, I was like, I was very surprised because I've actually tried the competition for like three times. And this is basically the third, yeah, the third or the fourth times, and finally I got it. And I've never been in an aeroplane flight before. So this is actually my first aeroplane ride, and it is all the way to London. And the most unexpected thing is actually the winning works. It's actually the back alley of my grandparents' house. Yep. Okay, so other than the works, I would love to share some, some of my own personal story. I have scoliosis. It is a spine disorder. So my spine is actually a S shape, but not a straight. And in this, I want to share about not giving up and keep pushing your own limits. And I actually climbed the, one of the highest mountains and peaked in Southeast Asia, which is Mount Kinabalu, like a few months ago, to get a lot of photographs of the mountains there. And I'm actually targeting to climb Everest Base Camp by next year. Yeah. So um, what I'm trying to say that it is possible to do anything if you have the heart. Yeah, I didn't even consult my doctor for this, so... <laughs> but luckily I made it, All right. I also bought myself a motorbike and I rode around the country and captured the unseen beauties. Because I think that there are some locations which are underappreciated and unseen, and I would love to capture the beauty in them. Alright, so to conclude, to conclude up my speech today, the one thing I want to say is that we all have the freedom to do anything we want, as long as it is the right thing. And don't let anyone tell you what to do. You know, like, go after your passion, go do what you love. You know, you want the girl's number, just go get, just go get it, or the boy's number. And yeah, life sometimes can be unfair, but that's not the reason for us to give up. Because we all, we all have different starting points in our own life. And yep, never ever give up. And finally, is to always be happy and contented with what we have now. Because life is too short. Life is too short to feel sad or despair. So just be happy. This is the ultimate thing in life. Do what you love, love, of, love what you do. All right, thank you. And my journey continues. Oh, um, and um, I would love to show a video. I would love to show a video of my photographs, and basically, it's a compilation of photographs of my country and the photos I've taken. Please enjoy.
All right, now it's for the Q&A sessions, and I'll start answering questions on the screen. All right. OK, I'll answer the regret about the regret. So for me, I personally think that regret is like a very bad thing in our own life. And yeah, actually I think during my entire life, I didn't have, did anything which makes me feel regret. And I think no, yeah, so what I've done, I think I'm, I feel very proud of it. And yeah, no regrets. All right, how much time do I spend after shooting with computer? Shooting, all right. Basically, um, it all depends on the complexity of the photographs. And if the photograph is more complex and there'll be more layers and I actually have to take like one or two days to work on it. But for most of my photograph, I actually shot it in raw. So I actually just did some basic color grading and it will probably take around five to 10 minutes it is like the old, old traditional way of bringing photos, the film photos, into the dark, room, the dark room and process it. So it's basically similar. I'm using Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe software to do my edits. Creativity to entrepreneurship. I think creativity is very important because I, th I believe that every business requires this, this particular part. Like every di business needs good photos, good designs, or good creativity to bring out the product or to sell the products. So I think it's, it is very highly relatable. And yeah, it is part of the core to creating a good business or delivering a great produ product. someone hesitating to follow their dream. Actually, it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward, you know, just follow your dream and just do it, three words, just do it. Okay, last one, what will, what will be your tip talk for promoting yourself? Actually, I didn't think much, to be honest, I didn't think much about the promotion part because I'm just focused on creating more and more works. That's my main priority and I think fame is like a side thingy which comes along, like a bonus packages for me. And that is not my main priority. I just want to create more and more works. Okay, thank you. <laughs>